Hello everyone, this is Thor and today we're going to be taking a look at the astrology chart of Sam Bankman Freed, who's been in the headlines quite a bit recently. Apparently he was CEO of a company called FTX, which was a large cryptocurrency exchange and they filed for bankruptcy this month in November. And he's basically trying to get to Dubai at the moment. So we're going to take a look at what happened. A lot of people are, you know, likening this to either Enron or even what happened with Bernie Madoff. So a lot of people are thinking there might have been some malfeasance involved with this. And so we're going to see what does the chart show? What do the planetary, what does the planetary karma indicate about all of this? For those of you that are new to my channel, make sure you like and subscribe so you can keep up to date. Hit the bell, of course, so you can get all the notifications. And as a reminder, I practice Vedic astrology, which uses the sidereal zodiac. I don't do Western tropical astrology, uh, which most astrologers practice. So I practice the astrology, which is from ancient India. If you're interested in your own personal private reading, check the details down below. And there's a special holiday discount if you're interested. So we are going to take a look at Sam Bankman Freed's chart. What I wanted to tell you at the get go is that we don't have a birth time for Sam. So we're using the moon chart. And the moon chart is something we have to look at anyways when we do any reading. For example, when we're looking at transits or we're looking at Mahadashas and Bhuktis, you always want to see the results from your moon as well. So we can get some information by looking at the moon sign. A uh, moon sign, for example, we know on the day Sam was born, we know that the moon was in Pisces. So that's going to be the lag, and we also know where the planets were that day. So we can still get some information from this. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Let's pull up the chart. By the way, uh, any statements are alleged, and this is my interpretation of Sam's chart based on the astrology and entertainment purposes only. So let's take a look at Sam's chart here. One of the things you'll notice is the moon is in Pisces there, so there's a little bit of that dreamer type of energy. A lot of artists happen to be Pisces people or moon in Pisces. But you also notice Mercury is there, and Mercury is the planet that we would consider the planet of a nerd. <laughs> so a lot of people that are into technology or gaming or uh, any type of IT work usually have a strong Mercury in their chart, or they'll be a Gemini ascendant or maybe a Virgo ascendant. So that's usually very much highlighted. And from all the reports I read, he, he was quote unquote a nerd. <laughs> so that's what I noticed about the chart. The other thing we can point out is if we take a look at where Rahu and K2 are in Sam Bankman Fried's chart, you'll notice Rahu's in the 10th house. And remember, Rahu shows where our ambition is in life. K2 shows where we're not so interested. There's a um, a scattering influence wherever K2 is in our chart. So with Rahu being in the 10th house, it's showing this desire for leadership, this desire to be somebody important, this desire to be someone who's noticed. And he became the CEO of a large cryptocurrency company. Now, like I've told many of you in the past, in my past videos, Rahu is like the trickster. Rahu will... Try to get yourself promoted at any cost, even using unethical means. So that's the problem with Rahu. There can be this idea of a lack of ethics with somebody really um, how they're promoted and what they're doing. So what we're learning about this so far is we're learning that this crypto exchange, apparently there was a lot of money that was transferred that was customers' uh, money that shouldn't have been transferred. So there was a lot of um, unsavory or unscrupulous business practices apparently happening. So the other thing I wanted to point out is Jupiter is in the sixth house in Sam Bankman Freed's chart. The sixth house, it's the house of lying, of cheating, of deception, and it's even the house of criminality. 
and conflict. So there's a lot of negative connections with the sixth house. When we're talking about evil houses, we're usually talking about six, eight, and 12. Those are called the evil houses in Vedic astrology because they are what tend to lead to losses in life. So six, sixth house can indicate uh, breaking the law, for example, criminal behavior, lies, deception. And when Jupiter is there, remember Jupiter likes to expand and multiply in any house it's in. So for example, if Jupiter was in the fourth house of the chart, it would show somebody owning many properties or many houses or having some sort of luck there. But Jupiter doesn't do good in the sixth house. The sixth house is like, there's this expansion of problem. There's this expansion of deception. And there's even this idea when Jupiter's in the sixth house that maybe somebody can cash in off of being deceptive. So there might be this illusion there like, you know, I don't need to be ethical. I, I can do these things and that could be a way to promote myself. Because if we look what Jupiter rules in the chart, Jupiter rules the first house. And it rules the 10th house of Sagittarius. So there's this idea of we can get places through through uh, using unscrupulous methods. So that's the danger with this type of thinking. Now, the interesting thing is, is let's take a look at what the outcome of that would be. Because if you want to look at the outcome, what you do is you count 11 houses from that planet to see what are the results of that house. So if Sam decides to take this course of action of deception or these types of things, well, what's going to be the karmic result? Well, if you count 11 houses from this, and this is a technique any of you, you can use in your own charts, this is called the results. The results of the sixth house are going to be the fourth house here with K2 there, so it shows losses. K2 is the planet that indicates large losses, it indicates downfalls. When we're thinking about companies going, like having a big downfall, for example, like Enron, and looks like FTX is on the same road too, K2 would be the planet that would do that. So K2 basically desiccates whatever house it's in. So the result of choosing that behavior equals the fourth house with K2 in it. So that's what you do. 11th from any house will show you the fruits of that house. That's just something to be aware of. Let me clean up this chart a little bit. The other thing I like to point out about Sam's chart is there's this uh, karma, you know, with Saturn being in the 11th house and with Mars being in the 11th house, there's this heavy karma. Those are malefic planets with financial gains and stock markets because that's what the 11th house represents in a chart. It represents how we make money. It represents how we invest money. And in a lot of charts, I use it as the house that represents investing in cryptocurrencies. So when Saturn's there, it shows there's a lot of hard lessons to learn through this house. And so it, this seems like a good example of someone really getting in over their head, you know, and then they used unscrupulous methods of the sixth house, and then they end up um, getting in some big trouble over what they're doing. So we definitely see some trouble here. Now, when we're talking about the near future of Sam Bankman Freed, one of the things I want to point out is we can't really use the doshas or the planetary periods because we're using a moon chart. So we can't really rely on that. All we can really look at is the transits that are happening right now. So one of the things that I think is important is transiting Saturn is in the 11th house right now. And so this is where all the problem is. This heavy karma with this company, remember, is happening. And Saturn is the 12th Lord. So there's a loss of this company that's happening. But as many of you remember... On January of January 17th, 2023, Saturn is going to be moving into the 12th house of Aquarius. So this is really what we're going to look at in terms of prediction. So from January 2023 to March of 2025, Saturn is going to be 
in the sign of Aquarius, Saturn takes about 2.3 years to transit his sign. So it's quite a long transit. So what we can see with that is the 12th house is going to be in focus. So this is going to be 12th from moon, obviously, in Sam's chart. But a lot of the moon, uh, when we're looking at from the moon, that's what we look at when we're interpreting charts. So it's important to look at as well. Let me clean that up. The 12th house, interestingly enough, it does represent things like spirituality, ashrams. It represents uh, spiritual centers, but it also represents things like prisons. Okay, that's represented by the 12th house. The reason why it represents prisons and even ashrams, the kind of considered the same thing, is that they're walled off spaces where there's essentially closed off from the outside world. So that's really what the 12th house represents when we see it in a chart. So when Saturn is in the 12th house, I've seen a lot of times where it's like somebody's forced into confinement. Someone's forced into prison. So we're likely to see some sort of prison term or confinement. It's being forced because Saturn represents the power of the state. It represents the government. We're seeing some sort of confinement happening over the next two years. And a lot of people are saying, and and. It could be a lot longer, by the way, obviously, if we're talking about a Bernie Madoff kind of level of, of crime that happened. But this could show the initial stages of, you know, a trial and then going to prison. So this actually does not look good at all uh, for Sam Bankman Freed. And it does show definitely what's really interesting, too is besides Saturn being in the 12th house, which could represent forced confinement. There's also this idea of when Saturn's going over your sun in your chart, this is when somebody is going through a major dark night of the soul type situation. It's basically society is, society is representative of Saturn, is, is basically crushing the ego. So for enlightenment purposes, that would be good, right? To have the ego be crushed. But in a, you know, in a normal person, in, in, in society, having Saturn go, going over your son and having your ego be crushed through societal judgment, going to prison, um, being scorned is not seen as an enjoyable thing and can be quite traumatic. So we see this being a quite traumatic time for, you know, when we're thinking about the sense of self, which is representative of the sun in your chart. So this is a real time of some serious heavy karma and a lot of uh, negative karma. Really, we're seeing this Akashic debt that's happening. It's almost like this heavy karma is being placed on the soul because the sun is considered the soul in your chart. So I don't see positive things and I don't think anyone expects positive things, obviously, with the amount of of people that are angry with the failure of FTX. But this is showing a very heavy karma happening during this time. So that's what I see. And I feel like the problem, again, I feel like this was the heart of the problem right here. This, this Jupiter in the sixth house, thinking that, you know, a lot of people get caught up into that. They, they think that if they, um, you know, if they break the law, they think, you know, it's not going to be me that gets caught, you know. And that becomes the, the folly that somebody ends up getting caught and the law catches up to them or they have a major consequence that the company just fails because there's natural forces, market forces at work that are going to cause any deception to be brought to light. That's really what we see happening right now. So thank you all for watching my video and let me know what you think down below in the comments and take care until I see you in the next one.